Julie Goodwin is a 38-year-old mother of three. How will she fare with some good old-fashioned home cooking? I'm doing a roast um, lamb rump with a garlic mash and a red wine sauce. Julie, are you a woman under pressure? <laughs> yes. You've still got a smile. <laughs> what kind of cook are you? Uh, big comfort foodie type things. I put my heart into it because I'm cooking for my kids usually, my friends, my family, cooking for the people I love, so I cook with love. I actually came here instead of taking my oldest son to his first day of high school. So now I've got to make it worthwhile. I've got to make it worthwhile. Okay. Come here. But just moments before judgment time, the pressure on Julie takes its toll. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Deep breath. They have a knot in there, don't they? I think you're ready. You are ready, OK? Yep, I'm ready. I'm ready. Everyone's behind you. Off you go. Hello. Hi, Julie. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm really, really excited to the point of terror. <laughs> right. Get on, load your stuff and start cooking. Yep, I'm going to carve and plate for you and just reheat my sauce. So, um, why MasterChef? I'd like to be good fast food, that people can come in, take home a beautifully cooked, fresh food, family meal, put it on their table, and it's home cooked food. It just wasn't cooked in the home it's served in. Lamb and mash. That's just a little bit undercooked, I think. But the lamb's nice. It could do with a bit more seasoning for me, a bit more salt. This is excruciating. <laughs> Because that is fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> Lovely. Really good. I've been looking for someone to do that sort of dish the whole time. Real home cooking that tastes of food and flavour. So really well done. Thank you so much. Well, the verdict. Well, look, I'll, I'll go first because really, you I, know, I think first. you know what I'm going to say. That's yeah, a, I know what you're That's say. a monster yes from me. I love it. Really good. Really good. I think I'm going to love you um, and I want you to be in Sydney. Really? Yeah. Then it's a yes for me, you're going through to Sydney. To the semi-finals. Well done. One of 50. Thank you so much. And who Thank thought? You. On the back of lamb and mash. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, you've made my day. It's not us, it's you. Oh, Just remember that. You. Bye. Bye. See you, See you next darling. time. <laughs> I just love it. I love cooking. I love people. I love cooking for people. <laughs> How do you feel placing the last dish that we're going to taste in front of us? I really gave it everything today. So, you know, whatever the result is, I'm, I'm happy. Do you think the Julie that first walked through these doors in the top 20 would have been able to plate up this dish? <laughs> no. Not a chance. If your boys could look at the plate that you just put up there in front of us, what do you think they'd say about you? They'd say, where's the rest of it? <laughs> <laughs> Please, could you plate up? We'd like to taste. Thank you. I'm curious to see whether or not that chocolate's tempered. Beautiful snap. It looks beautiful. It doesn't look as good as Poe's. I'm going to say it right from the word go. There's too much pastry as a comparison to the amount of tart. Julie, that chocolate tart is beautiful. The macaroon is chewy and delicious. Uh, the sorbet is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The tart's probably a little bit thinner than Matt's, um, and also it's a little bit thicker in terms of the base. But having said that, that sorbet is as good as I've had anywhere in Australia. It's rich, it's light, it's bright, and the texture is absolutely like velvet.
Julie, really tricky dessert. Didn't think you were going to be able to do it, and I think that is fabulous. And I think the difference between when you walked into this competition with that big lamb and mash to that final dish of a beautiful and delicate chocolate dessert is, is a testament to your determination. Fabulous. Thank you. Come on, guys. You need to push this along. Try and keep up with Matt. Quail, I think, is done well. I've got some nice colour on it, but we can't overcook it. It's a very thin bird, very small animal. We're really looking for a nice pink colour there. Well done. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Adam, how do you think you went? Um, didn't go exactly as planned. Tell us why. Uh, when I put the twills on top of the um, snow eggs and I was applying the blowtorch, they were cracking. OK. And, um, just not, not sure what went wrong then. Well, I think it's uh, time for us to taste. I'm a little. And by a little, I mean a lot. What makes this dish is the textures as you plunge your spoon through. The first crack of that twill, and as your spoon sort of disappears into this nothingness, which is the meringue. That's the, that's the first test. What I love is you've managed to get that real lightness in the meringue, and then you've got a wonderful fineness in that Maltose um, cracknel that you put over the top. And, well, you stood there, you heard. It's all about that sound. When you hear that crack like that, you know you've done a good job. For me, that's a nigh-perfect copy of Peter Gilmore's dish, and you've done his recipe proud. Well done. I did have the, the one that had cracked a little bit on the top, but I really could not fault the flavour of the dish. It was really spectacular. Well done. Thanks, mate. You didn't get the uh, cracknel perfect around all of them, but my gosh, you got the flavour right. And that's what represents a good dish. You're standing here with a 50-50 chance of winning this thing with four points up on the board. How much are you hoping that this is gonna fall your way? I don't know if it surprises you or not, but I don't actually win a lot in my life. There's a lot of second places. How badly? With everything I've got. I'm happy with what I've produced because I know I like to eat it, but I'm also feeling really nervous because I'm just not 100% sure if what I've done is, is enough to impress them. I have cooked a flatbread kofta with a tomato and mint salsa. Can you cut a little bit off? Yeah, give us a little bit as well. Just, just cut a nice little triangle. Come on, come on, share. Just cut off. That is an absolute crack up. I'd sit down for dinner happily every single night and eat one of those. That is beautiful. The interesting chefs on Master Chef are the ones that look at the boring ingredients and bring us something that excites us. So thank you very much indeed, because you've got us excited. You've made us exhilarated to be back on season three of Master Chef. I feel a little bit weak at the knees and think just keep standing up. Can't get the smile off my face. Thank you. Well done. Fantastic Thanks. job. Good stuff.
I don't know if I've gone out at number one or number two, but at the moment, that's irrelevant. I've gone out cooking the best that I can. So, Kate, are you happy with what you've just put in front of us? I am. I'm really happy. I really wanted today to be all about cooking well and putting good food on the plate, and to finish that way, I'm happy. The one thing I noticed compared to Renee's dish is that your snowman seems to be wearing a nice full kind of Victorian skirt <laughs> yes. rather than a, a, little, a little kind of ball at the bottom. Yeah. I don't think that's a problem. Um, I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a difference that obviously comes from having to pipe the meringue for the first time, and it's very hard to get that round shape. Yeah. Right, shall we taste? It's impossible to read the judges' faces. I hate the waiting. They chew and they deliberate in their own minds. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. And I just want to know. Now. I don't want to have to wait. And it's like the judges just enjoy this moment of torture. It's sort of hard to stop, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely balance of acidity okay. and sweetness. I have stopped. <laughs> so I've finished. <laughs> but I'm more than happy to eat yours. You know, you've just cooked the hardest dish in the repertoire at Noma. <laughs> and you pretty much nailed it. Number one restaurant in the world. Is that enough to make you the number one amateur cook in Australia? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Beautiful job, Kate. Really, really well done. You're a dream to watch in the kitchen, the way you worked precisely, correctly, and what you've put up is spectacular. Thank you. That was an absolute delight <laughs> to eat. Beautiful textures, just beautiful balance. It's a very, very special dessert. As you can tell, it was horrible. I'd, <laughs> if I could lick the plate, I'd do it. And even George ate the little carrot nose, which uh, <laughs> he must have liked it. Good stuff. Can I say that was such a lovely way to end my time in the MasterChef kitchen. I just enjoyed every minute of it, so it, it's been a very special day. Can you believe it? I mean, you know, less than a couple of weeks ago, you are in Newcastle, and here you are now, doing a three-hat dessert from one of the best chefs in the country. Yeah, I, I didn't even know what it was <laughs> when you lifted the lid. Now, a little birdie told me that you you blew a vault in your pants. Is that right? Yeah, I had um, a bit of a blowout. That was a good look. Are you hoping for an apron today? I want it more than anything. Really, more than anything. That's special. It really is. Um, it's fresh, it's clean. You taste peach. Uh, you got that little bit of caramel there. Okay, it could be, there could be a little bit more on there. But you know what? You're an amateur cook, and this is only, you know, the top 50. Well done. Thanks. Really good. The acidity of the raspberries, the crunch of the caramel. So, well done, Andy. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks Apes. Thanks, Apes. Appreciate it. Come out here, mate. No, oh, right here.
try that on for size. Mm -hmm. See how you feel. Because I reckon you might be getting a real one of those in a minute. Cheers, guys. OK, Andy. Thanks. Andy! G'day. Look at him. He's buzzing. Um, Unbelievable. Come in with a little jaunt there. You feel good? Oh, I feel relieved. Uh, yeah, I feel good. It's, um, that was a massive challenge it for me personally. Challenge. Bigger question for you. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? The competition's done. We're moments away from revealing the results. What are you going to do? To start as... I don't know. I, I never thought I'd be here, but, I mean, I've got here by researching and learning and, and I want to do more of that. Um, I can see my skills have developed, my knowledge has developed, but it's still not where I want not where I want it to be. It's not over yet. It isn't over yet. Are you ready? Yep. Go on then. Oh, he's flying up, isn't he? I honestly think that not being someone who's familiar with desserts has helped me. I have no instincts about any of the techniques at all. All I did was follow that recipe word by word, but they crack into it and it doesn't taste exactly like Christine's. I'm done. That's it, man. You're done. Thank you very much. You're done. <laughs> See yes. Look how good they all look when you're mm. looking down the table. They're like little soldiers. And I love that little bulge of caramel poking mm. out through the top, yep. going, eat me, eat me. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it, let's eat it. Right, let's go. Ooh, there she goes. Looks delicate, looks beautiful. Looks like the one you put up earlier on today, Christine. Yeah. Um, the construction of the dish, I think, I mean, he's nailed the biscuits perfectly. Mm. They were very uniform. That caramel ice cream, I could just, you know, that alone I could just sit and eat. Mm. <laughs> I find the mousse quite uh, confected. It's, it's mm. a bit artificial. A little bit dense. And yeah. I'd say probably it's just that ratio of cream to gelatin, probably just a dash too much gelatin. The caramel's a little, um, and the, in the nuts is a little hard on the top. It should be a lot looser and it should mm. coat those hazelnuts a lot better. Oh, I've never had a tart not set. Did you put in sugar? Yeah, we put everything we put in. put everything in, didn't we? Freaking out, you know, the tarts should be setting and they're not setting. It's all right, just, just believe, trust. So Em and I decide that the only thing to do is to pray. Please, <laughs> please, little <laughs> oven. <laughs> please, can you please set? Can we come and have a look? I'm scared. No. I'm scared. We're about to pull our tarts out of the oven. The dessert team's freaking out. I'm sick. How does it look? Oh, set. Nice. Nice. The tarts have set. They did that last minute thing where they take a while to heat and then bang. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, girls, that's beautiful. The relief in our team is just beyond words. I love you. Okay, we need to get a wriggle on, guys. No naked tarts in this kitchen. Oh, yeah. Oh. Looks a bit better than ours. You're right. <laughs> You're actually right, it does. Jules, don't pick on Dan. He started it, as usual. Tell us what the dessert is. We dished up a classic lemon tart with a raspberry coulis. I'm going to ask you the question that Gary's going to ask you, which is, where's the cream? Um, we had a couple of issues at the supermarket earlier today, and after the boxing gloves came out, the, um, the dessert got compromised on, so the cream and the ice cream went back. Between you and me, Jules, do you think it needs cream? No. Maybe a little. Maybe a dollop. Mm. OK, yeah. So, but, you know, we're pretty comfortable with what we've served up. Thank you. Enjoy, boys. We thought you could do with a little bit of tart. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys did such an amazing job with the little ingredients yeah, that you had. Thank you. you know, it looked fantastic. Cream, no cream. Seriously, it was, it was, it was restaurant tasting. quality. It looked fantastic. Tell me what you think. It's Citron Defcon 5 right now. Just it's citrus overload. Okay, but yep. that's good, isn't it? Lemon tart. That's what it's all about. Yeah, just missing the. Missing you want something, something to smooth it out. Yeah, yeah. You know the cream, the cream fresh. Yep, love it. Just missing that. 
not enjoying the pastry as much as I think the girls will be enjoying our pastry on our pie. Oh. Big Nick, he was poor. Did you know he didn't cook at all? He delegated. He did absolutely nothing. And do you know, cooking. bless his heart, he came up to no. me and he goes, How did you like being captain? And I went, It was a little bit hectic. And he goes, It was the loneliest time of my life. Oh. <laughs> um, I just wipe them down, put them in the box. They're good to go. In the box, in the box. Good luck, little fellas. A lot of my destiny is sitting in that box. Let's be honest, of course I'd love to win, but it's, it's hard. Two points is a lot to make up in a grand finale. Yeah. <laughs> Emma, can I, tell you, can I tell you something? Yeah. You've been fabulous, funny, slightly quirky through this whole competition, but you brighten up our day when you come in here. And you've had this kind of crazy approach in, in the kitchen where one minute it's going brilliantly well and the next minute it all falls in a heap. Um, I never thought I was a perfectionist, but I think I do like things a particular way. How do you feel when you cook? It just brings up everything. It's, it's everything. It's my universe. And I just love not just the finished product, but right from the beginning. That's what I love. You know, we start from nothing and end with nothing. It's what we make in the middle of it. <laughs> We, we, we've loved every single moment, and his fingers crossed Thank now. You. Thanks, thanks for the, the wild ride, guys. Thanks, guys. Ben. Little, little, little tear in the corner of ours. Oh, not on ours, but um, it's a little uneven. Yep. Right, let's taste and let's go. Oh yeah, listen to that. It sounds, sounds like the real deal. Oh, crunchy bits. Yeah, straight away you can hear it. Crunchy. Crunch. Did you hear that? Straight into crunch. Ben, what do you think? The, the biggest difference I noticed when I first took my first mouthful was that the meringue was excellent. And that seemed to be the right amount to me. Mm. Just that sound when you crack in and you, you hear yep. the meringue cracking like ice on a, on a thin puddle is beautiful. The consistency of that curd is, is brilliant and yeah. it carries the flavour. It's sort of, it's that creamy feel in your mouth yeah. that then counteracts the granita, the, the crunch and the meringue, and it lingers. I mean, my, my palate is salivating. It's, it's yeah. beautiful. The, the negatives for me, one, the same as Linton. The presentation when you lift the lid was not quite there. Yeah, I think presentation with this one, again, was a problem. The, the, the tear on the top does, does detract from the look of the dish when you, when you open it. And I, and I think that that granita is a lot more acidic than, than Linton's. It's not a huge detraction, but we're not talking about a huge difference. No. You know, if it costs you a point across four people, that can be the difference between winning the title and losing it. You know what this means? Finish the goes <laughs> to the wire, all the way to it the does. wire. Can she make enough points up? Yeah. Shall we score? Let's. 